In this video, I'm going to go through my master's application to the University of Cambridge. I've put timestamps in the description so you can skip to the bits of the video you want to see. Just for some context, hi, I'm Ilya. I'm a student at the University of Cambridge and I study natural sciences and I'm in my final year of my degree. In this video, I'm going to go through why I am doing a master's, why I applied to Cambridge, and then I'll go through my application in detail. So the reason I'm doing a master's, I'd say there's two main reasons. First of all, I don't feel ready to progress to a PhD and I think I do want to keep studying to do a PhD but at the moment I don't feel as if I have enough experience. Although I've done internships and stuff as part of my degree I haven't done that much and then because of coronavirus I haven't had any in-person teaching since March 2020 so for nearly a year I've had no lab work which is partly why I don't feel ready for a PhD. So doing a master's would get me more research experience and would make me more prepared. The second reason I want to do a master's is that I'm not quite sure what I want to specialise in. Although I know I like evolutionary biology and genetics, there's a lot to choose within those subjects, which is why by doing a master's in one of those subjects, I'd be in a better position to decide in the future what to specialise in. So once I decided that doing a master's is what is right for me. So I looked at all the different places and all the courses they provide. I looked at um, Cambridge, Oxford, some places in the US, but eventually I chose Cambridge because of the course that it offered. The one at Oxford didn't really appeal to me and although I'd be interested in studying abroad at some point, maybe in the US, right now I don't think it's the right climate because of coronavirus and also when I was applying, Trump was still the president, which meant that it might not be easy for me actually to get into the US. So I narrowed it down to wanting to study at Cambridge and I narrowed it down to either doing an MPhil in zoology or genetics. So the way I found the genetics and zoology courses was via this course directory on the Cambridge website where I just searched biology and that kind of stuff and I just looked at all the different courses that they offer and it's the MPhil in genetics and the MPhil in zoology which particularly interested me. Both of those MPhils are research based and you need to propose a project with a supervisor so it doesn't really matter what department it's in it's all about who you do your MPhil with and what project. So what I did is I looked at all the labs in the genetics department and the zoology department and then I systematically analysed all of them and it narrowed down to like a short list of labs I would be interested in being involved in. After analysing all those labs, I came down to this one lab which I'd be very interested in working with a supervisor who'd actually lectured me in my second year and who I knew a bit and I liked them and looked at the work they were doing and it was very interesting work which is why I contacted them saying hello I'd be interested to do my masters with you here's my CV and they got back to me and we had a zoom call and they also seemed keen to have me and after hearing that I thought okay, I'll propose a project with him uh, that's when I started doing my application so now for my actual application this is via the course directory I mentioned earlier you just go and apply and then you make an account or for me because I already have a Cambridge account I just log in and then I just start filling out the application. So obviously there's the like, put your name, your contact details and that kind of stuff. And then you can put down, do you want to bring your wife, your kids, list the relevant jobs you've had. And then like I said, you need to propose a project and a supervisor. So the way I chose a project was I had calls with the person who I'm putting down as my supervisor and we discussed ideas based on what his lab was doing. And eventually we came up with an idea which is that I'd look at the role of YRNAs in DNA replication. So as part of the application you need to do a research project proposal and there's not much guidance on this actually. Uh, so what I did is I wrote about 700 words excluding citations and I gave an introduction, I gave the research program and then I talked about its timeliness novelty and benefits and that kind of stuff. I also had to summarize this research project in 250 words but for some reason the text box for that had a character limit of a thousand characters which is not quite the same as 250 words. Because of that I just put a note saying there wasn't enough space to see the attached document and I put the summary in the document that contains the research project proposal. So once I got the research project proposal done and the name of the project I named my supervisor, I worked on my CV. 
I've kind of already got a CV. I submitted my CV something the last summer, so I just used that, tweaked it a bit to make it more relevant and up to date. Then I needed to submit a transcript. This is just a record of all my grades at university. For me, I can get my transcript just by going online on this Cambridge website and downloading it. It is an unofficial transcript, but because I am only applying and I haven't got in yet, it's fine to use an unofficial transcript. Another thing I need for my application is two referees. There's two people who will write a reference for me and hopefully say nice things about me. The two people I chose are both based at the zoology department, which I thought might help my application. The first person I chose was my director of studies from first year because we get along quite well and he knows me and he is a senior figure in the zoology department so I thought this would strengthen my application. The second person I chose is someone who supervised me for a summer internship in the zoology department in the summer after my first year so I thought he'd be a good person to talk about my research abilities given that I'm applying for a research based course. What's important is that I don't actually see my references so it is completely confidential. You have to request your reference via the application portal. There's also a section on research experience so I just wrote about how in my degree I've done research, I've, done, I've had to do projects and how I did a summer internship uh, in the zoology department um, in the summer after my first year where I did a bit of research and how I did some research for my EPQ at school. I also had to briefly write about my career goals. I just talked about how I want to do scientific research and how doing a master's would help me do that. I also had to write a 1000 to 2000 word statement of interest which is basically a personal statement. So I started off by writing almost anything I could think of which was about 2000 words. I talked about my EPQ project, the summer internships I've done, I talked about the stuff I've done as part of my degree and I talked about how those things, the things I've done have taught me valuable skills and how those skills are relevant to my ability to do research as a scientist. I also explained why I'm applying for this course which like I said is because I feel as if I need more research experience and because I'm not quite sure what to specialise in exactly and I also try to justify why I am a suitable candidate for this course. Unfortunately the word limit for this statement of interest didn't match up with the character limit, it was 7,500 characters, which is equivalent to about 1,200 words. So I had to cut back from 2,000 words all the way down to 1,200, which in a way was good because it meant that I was writing much more concisely. So as part of the statement of interest, they advise you to write about why you're applying research experience and your research interests. I also talked about how my research interests were in genetics and evolutionary biology, although, like I said, I'm not quite sure what exactly I want to specialize in within those fields. Okay, so another important important part of the application is funding. I looked for funding via the university's funding directory. All you do is you tell it like what you're studying and when you're studying it, which college and that kind of stuff and it gives you a list of available funds and by doing this I found this one scholarship which looks very good. It's the Cambridge UK Masters Scholarship and it would pay for my tuition fees. The cost of this master program is 8,844 yeah, £8,844 per year, which is like a couple of hundred pounds cheaper than doing an undergrad, but obviously it's still quite expensive, so getting a scholarship would be very good. So yeah, I applied for the Cambridge UK Master Scholarship. Fortunately, you don't need to make a separate application, as in you just submit your normal application, and you just tick a box saying, yes, I want to be considered for funding, and then they'll consider your application for funding. Or they have to submit it before a deadline. And the deadline will vary depending on your course, but it's either the 3rd of December or the 7th of January. Unfortunately, I thought I was the 3rd of December, so I had my application done by the 3rd of December. Then two days before and I found out actually no, my deadline for funding was the 7th of January. I unnecessarily made it ready way too early but I guess it's better to have done it this way than the other way around. There's also a few other funding things available. Uh, there's like the Gates scholarship but I'm not eligible for that. There's also this Commonwealth fund but I don't think I was eligible for any of their funds. As part of your application you can also choose a college. So if you study at the University of Cambridge you'll be based at a specific college, there's about 30 of them, and I'm currently based at Jesus College and because I know it's a nice college I applied to Jesus for my masters as well. You can also put a second choice down and I put St John's College as second choice because I think it's an alright college 
as well. If you want to help with choosing a college, I've made a video just for doing that and I've also got a flowchart that you can use to choose your college. If you don't choose, you'll just be allocated one randomly, but I'd recommend not doing that. It's good to apply to a college that you know you'd like. There's also a few other requirements for this course. Um, so I think what happened is if they like me, they'll give me an offer, which usually is to get a T1 or a first or something like that. I think it's a T1 normally. And I didn't have to do this, but if you are an international student, you might have to have certain English language requirements. I have a British passport and stuff, so I don't have to do it. There's also a £70 submission fee for when you want to submit your application. So I just submitted my application a few days ago and I haven't heard anything back yet. On the website it says that they'll tell me within eight weeks whether I've got in or not and I might get an interview at some point. I guess we'll just wait and see. Uh, thank you for watching, I've got loads of more videos lined up. If you have any suggestions or questions, please do leave a comment and maybe, maybe, maybe consider subscribing.